All right, I've moved all of my frames into a folder in assignment three. These are my final frames. And to get them to all show up in order, all I do is organize them by name, right? And so it goes from the one I renamed as zero all the way to my very last one. And actually, this is a duplicate of zero. So in all, I actually have 34 frames. for my animation telling it took me 34 frames to tell a nine frame storyboard right because a lot of them are are in betweens now i go to that assignment and to this site the easygift.com maker and if this site ever goes away there'll be another one like it <laughs> you know there's always like free gif generators and i'm going to select the images and that's why I put them into my final frames folder so they're easy to select instead of leaving them in downloads because there might be a lot of other junk in downloads. And look, all 34 frames are coming in. Remember to check the resolution before. They should be 8 by 8 inches by either 100 pixels per inch or 150 pixels per inch. Either works. And then I'm going to say upload and make a GIF. The reason we got to check the, the size and the resolution before is that GIFs are limited, right? The max size is 100 megabytes in total. And if you have a lot of frames and they're at print resolution instead of screen resolution, you're not going to, it's going to be too big to make. I chose the files. Come on. And then I think I had this problem when I tested it. I had to switch to, to manually putting them in. And I'm not sure why, but why not? It just won't automatically do it, though it's supposed to based on its numbering. So I'm going to take zero first, put it in. One, two, three. Four, and remember, you just got to be patient with it. This is a free website. Five, six, and this is just what's called post-processing. You've done all the hard work. Now you're just trying to make it look good in a format that people can enjoy. So I'm on nine. I go to 10, 11. Students sometimes try to do this without like numbering them. And it's just a nightmare. So however you can stay organized. And even if it should be able to bring them in automatically, this is the real experience of controlling the order of each frame. Because how is animation showing us movement? It's just controlling the time that you're viewing sequential images. That's why it's called time-based media. And this gave us full control of everything we put, and now we get full control of the timing for how long we'll look at each thing. Now, I like to use consistent timing. That's kind of how I've demoed it. So I tend to use one-third of a second. So one-thirty-third of a second, basically. Now, upload and make the GIF, and I just got to be patient, which I have a hard time doing. But um bum 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 And if I'm worried, I can open up one of my files in preview and just make sure under adjust size, that it is 8 by 8 inches by either 100 or 150. Either works. Why is it not doing it? <laughs> it did the test ones. And yeah, each one is only 1.5 megabytes. So this is definitely within 100 megabytes total. Annoying. All right, 
Let's do it again. I don't know, easygift.com. Feels like it could be easier. I'm just going to try the 33 numbered ones. I'm just going to try to wait. All right, while I'm waiting, I can go to Photo P and I can go to my stage file and I can find what I think is the frame that should be in the middle. I can always change this. But based on my, my storyboard, rough sketch, which frame should be in the middle? And it should be this one, or close to this one. Maybe it's like that one. So I'm going to turn that frame on, and I might even mark it with a color. Let's say green. Now I'm going to build my refined storyboard. You can do this at the same time as you're working on outputting. And the easy GIF maker is working on something. Maybe we're overloading it. I don't know. But I, I go to Photo P. And I'm going to use my rulers. So if the rulers are not turned on, go to View and Rulers. And I'm going to use my Move tool at the top of the tools. I'm going to select that middle layer and I'm going to let my guide stick to the edges around all four edges. This is our first introduction to how we can do a layout in a raster program. So what we want, this is our whole stack of animation cards, right? Like a flipbook. We want to tear out certain pages of that flipbook and put them as nine really clean storyboard frames. So I need to grow the, the table where I can put these pages. So I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size, and grow the space around my image. I'm going to do it in inches, and I'm going to make it 30 by 40 inches. 30 by 40 is the largest printable size from professional four-color offset lithography prints. Okay, now, I hate this checkerboard. It hurts my eyes. So I'm going to make a new layer close to the background, say edit, fill it with white, even though it's not strictly necessary, but to save my eyes a little bit. Fill it with pure white and then put that layer behind everything. And then I'm going to pick what my, I can turn off my middle panel, right? And I can pick what my panels are. So what's my first panel going to be? Do I want to show the eyes fading in, or do I want to start with the cat? And I think I'll just start with the cat. Maybe with the cat in layer 6, kind of faded out. Oh, but look, if I do it this way, they're all going to be right next to each other. So that's not good. So before I do that, I need to make gutters. And to do that, I'm going to go to View, Show, Grid. Grid is different than Guides. Grid is based on the pixels. And I want to go an even distance on all sides of my center image. So I'm going to make a guide. And let's see, I'm going to go from 1600 to 1400. That's the equivalent of an inch and a half. As long as it's the same dimension on all sides, you'll have a good storyboard. So I'm going to go from 2400 to 2200 pixels. And here I'm going to go from 2800 to 3000 pixels. Oh no, I think that's going to be, let me turn off the grid. Yeah, that didn't catch. And you can just do it with the ruler as well, but the grid will help it stick. 
you know, evenly on each side. There we go. And you can toggle on the grid with command apostrophe. You can also count the squares if you're into that to get that even measurement on all sides. So I just need it on the bottom. It's one, two, three, four, five squares. One, two, three, four, five squares. All right, now toggle off the, the grid with command apostrophe. And now I've got the slots for these images. So this is going to be my first image. I'm going to move it up here. My next image, skip a few, not that one, not that one. What do I have here? Oh, it is that. The fish starts to come in. That's going to be my next one. Oh, not that. Just this. Then the fish is traveling across. But I want to get to that by the middle. Or I might take the middle one, layer 10. Come on. Put that here. So now this is actually the middle. Then I'm going to have this one show up here. The new fish appears. Actually, that's maybe the middle. So I'll turn this one off and make this one the middle. So just whatever you think tells the clearest story, kind of in this comic book storyboard form. Uh, command apostrophe. Command semicolon for the guides to toggle them on and off. Command apostrophe for the grid. I'd have to look and see. Are you so layout is difficult in Photoshop because it's hard to get exact proportions so that the big trick is to always use canvas size to center something, to grow from the center out, and then to use your guides and grid to measure from the center out. So actually, I get to kind of pick. I don't think I want this frame. I think I want this one. Actually, I don't want that one. I want this one. <laughs> and then I'm going to immediately show him green and sick. So I have to find that frame. This doesn't have as much room for subtlety as your animation, right? So I won't make him fully sick. I'll make him like, yeah, maybe that's sick. And then, hoo -hoo. maybe I'll even combine these two together a little bit by playing with opacity. And then merge them. Because this is just for your storyboard. You're going to save this as a different file name than your stage. Ah, oh, but I cropped it. So that's annoying. So I'm going to use this, use my guides, because remember I grew that one a little bit and I didn't crop it at the end. So I'm going to center it. It's all going to be fine, but this is why we want to get good layout, especially for stuff we print. 